Hi, this is Mike Lally of Know Your Mind. Welcome to part three of how to coach with emotional intelligence. In part two, we mentioned that to pursue a goal requires a binding relationship between the situation, thoughts, emotions, and behavior. And the best framework to adopt is to approach coaching with logic and emotion working in tandem, working together. In this part, we'll complete the logic and emotion equation and then set the scene for moving on to the important coaching process of how to ask questions and ask them with insight. But first, let's complete the discussion on logic and emotion. Now, it seems that many coaches are somewhat hesitant, perhaps unable or unwilling, or lack the confidence to negotiate the best emotional state to be in to achieve a desired target. Often emotions are treated as peripheral to the coaching process. But if you stop for a moment and think about a phrase such as desired target, it's plain we have a collective emotional and logical combination that makes perfect sense when we want to pursue something worthwhile. Now it's a target, so steps are clearly in existence and it's desired, which of course arouses the passion to go and get it. Now, all outcome-based thinking requires knowing what to do to get the result. This is a hard fact. Now, Thomas Gradgrind in Dickens' Hard Times said, facts and facts alone is what is wanted in life, but it's not enough. Now, a coaching framework based on emotional intelligence will guide cognitive processes such as planning and problem solving with the optimal emotional behavior to go and pursue and get the outcome. So emotions and thoughts are mutually dependent. Now a master coach will highlight the relationship between thinking, emotions and behavior. And it's crucial to recognize that certain types of thinking and actions require specific moods, almost tailored moods, in order to have the best chance of reaching the outcome. I think it's fair to say that we all recognize that at heart, we are creatures of habit. So when we are faced with a problem, we naturally look for the answer using our own experiences when we dealt with something similar. We rely on familiarity. However, if a problem is unfamiliar, we can have difficulty finding the answer because we do not have any experience to fall back on. Where we look for the answer, the answer just isn't there. Now, by asking powerful, well-constructed questions, you can get a person to consider their own resources, resources they haven't thought were available to them to get answers. And they'll be so surprised to learn that they already had the answers well within their grasp. And this process could lead to the creation of new neural networks and make a person much more resourceful. So that completes part three. In the next part, we'll continue with the questioning skills that make such a huge difference to the coaching process when used intelligently. So thank you so much for watching. Please visit my website, knowyourmind.com, or my blog, mikelally.com. I'd love to hear from you, so please make contact. In the meantime, take care, and remember, you've got many faces. Let's put them to use. So until we meet again very soon, I hope, look after yourself. Cheerio for now.